you for the opportunity for uh, me to just have you greet and meet with me this evening. Uh, I am a consultant with EIRC. Uh, I am also a uh, employee of the Bucks County Schools Intermediate Unit in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. I am their Director of Strategic Services. Uh, I started out uh, my career in education in 1974 as a marketing teacher. I did that for a number of years, uh, over 10, 12 years. And then over 21 years ago, I was hired by the IU uh, to do strategic planning. Uh, I've been certified in the Cambridge process of strategic planning. And uh, throughout my career, I've done over 200 uh, plus strategic plans with school districts in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and New York. Uh, not only have I done strategic planning with school districts, I also do strategic planning with nonprofit organizations like your United Ways, March of Dimes, Big Sisters, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Uh, so uh, I was saying to your uh, the meeting tonight with your board and your superintendent and a cabinet member that I absolutely love strategic planning. Uh, I love going into districts, working with organizations, working with the board, working with the leadership team. And as I opened up your uh, documents tonight, one of your goals is to have that stakeholder involvement from the community with your strategic plan. And uh, that's what I can bring to you uh, with my expertise in strategic planning. Uh, where I would uh, start in January, uh, finish up by May, uh, have large group, small group reflections, bring in the community, uh, develop a short survey for your community uh, to get feedback. And uh, I think one of the most important uh, uh, things that I pride myself in when I do strategic planning is that, and I actually said this to your superintendent this evening, uh, I could probably sit in his office and we could sit down and write a great strategic <coughs> plan and it would be beautiful and wonderful, but I think it's more important that we involve all the community in the development of the strategic plan. And so uh, you have such great expertise in the community between your parents, your community, your business members, uh, your PTAs, uh, your staff, your leadership team, and of course the board. Uh, so I'd be happy to work with you uh, in your district and uh, work with you in developing a real measurable objective strategic plan, uh, one that can be implemented not with a thousand goals and strategies and action plans, but rather uh, a really um, reality-based plan, kind of a blueprint, a journey that you can follow for the next three to five years. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have, anything about my background and my work. Sure. <coughs> Would your process be similar to what I'm uh, I'm not familiar with the exact process that, that uh, Charles uh, did, but I did uh, present to uh, your superintendent and your board tonight uh, a brief PowerPoint with the overview and the process that I would do. I thought it would be similar in some way. That's why I asked her. I didn't think she would know what Dr. Ivory had done. Um, but similar to Dr. Ivory, who's kind of a square, four square model, um, <coughs> she uses some of the similar resources to get community involved and stakeholders to identify their strengths, their challenges, um, where they see the goals, strengths, and challenges are, and how they can relate to that. And so, so I mean, just, exactly. mm -hmm. and, and I also said to your superintendent, your board presentation, uh, board pre president, uh, that I pride myself on, on, on doing the process from beginning to end. So whatever the contract is, uh, it's not, you know, I'll make sure that we have enough meetings, we have enough processes in place, uh, because my ultimate goal is to give you and work with you and have a really good plan. One, one of the interesting things that came out of the meeting was the fact <coughs> that Pennsylvania has mandatory strategic planning. So, I'm going to pronounce your last name. Karate. Ms. Karate. Um, involved in that on an ongoing basis with 13 plus districts in her area and that's a full-time job for her on top of going out into other districts. So New Jersey does not have that as a ma as mandate. So, so it's cyclical in some sense, it's like districts would be on the third time they've used her. Uh, 
time to their constitution provides expired. Right. So every three years in Pennsylvania, uh, a district, and we call it comprehensive planning, but it's the same terminology as strategic planning. So uh, right now we're working with the districts in Bucks County and then Montgomery County. So it's about 22 districts. And also through, uh, through EIRC, presently right now I'm working with uh, Franklin Township Public Schools over in Somerset and, and uh, doing their strategic planning process. I've also had uh, experience working with New Jersey schools. I think when you had CUSAC, I did, I did work uh, through CUSAC doing that work. And then I also uh, have worked with middle states and, and going as a team leader, uh, looking at their middle states' uh, uh, different qualifications and things. So I love it. I love the strategic planning. So. One of the things you did say, oh, sorry. Go ahead. That um, you find your expertise in uh, working with groups and making sure they stand task. Yes. To get to I'm a real task force. Right. So working with them to make sure that whether you know, a group of teachers coming together, and that's what happens when you have these meetings. Like the administrators come together, they want to sit together, the teachers come together, and they want to sit together, and the parents and the PTAs that are here, that she defines it essential and as good as making sure they're all into broken up into groups and that they stay on task and they get to the, where the goals are mine. Yeah, absolutely. What would the approximate cost of the district, or is that still a it's still it's still it being negotiated with because of the ERIRC and some previous work in the past. So that's it should be in line with what we've already covered. Yeah. So I know um, you had said maybe we start in January, and would we have the commitment by May? Just to, you know, I mean, I'm sure our superintendent and our president uh, might have expressed our frustration of we were thinking we'd be done about you know January. And five months probably is enough. I'd like to see it shortened, but you know, I mean, I know that. I just want to make sure your schedule is not going to be an issue because I, I know it took a while to coordinate a meeting. So I just want to make sure that once we start, we're not going to have to go through these scheduling issues or you know, not be able to find time. So I'm just the deadline is what is my concern, being able to get a deliverable in time for our year-end goals and. So that's we concern. looked at some timelines this evening, and uh, my commitment, uh, should you acquire my services, was May 16th to have that have that plan ready uh, to be approved by the board. It needs to be ready before the day. That's absolutely needed. So we need to have to have it before January. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. right. Have right. it before, so it's right. it's ready for that. Right. For, for and if, uh, you know, if we are. I was thinking so. June is hard, but also June is also getting late for preparing for next year <coughs> in our budget, in our cycle. So I'm just that's it. The time is is what my biggest concern is. Yeah, and, and I along okay. with Kelly was saying is that the reason we were trying to have it done by January is that we caught up with the budget cycle. That's that's not going to happen. That's not your fault. It's not even our fault. It's just right. that things that happen. And and I in, in Pennsylvania I've turned around uh, strategic plans within three four months without an issue with that. So uh, and I, I I said that to the superintendent. I think the goal is to have a, an accurate strategic plan that works for the community and the timeline. That's an essential mm -hmm. important too. But right. Our biggest part is going to spend the money and do it. Well, Ms. Perotti, if we if we contract Ms. Perotti services, um, she will have the meeting with the board, and that's some of the things that we can discuss and iron out at that time. Our first two meetings, one will be with the board, and the next will be the instructional leadership team, a uh, the principal supervisors, uh, directors, and so forth, will take place in the first two meetings. Uh, January. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we were looking at what January possibly January ten. Right. So we're trying to kind of sketch out because of those constraints. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Sorry. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I'm going to email you <coughs> phone call away, and uh, your superintendent and board president have all my contact information. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as I
I say at the regular board, board meetings, certainly time to even make a gracious exit. <laughs> <laughs> Choose not to educate a foster child? The, yeah, the, the model of this law 
is to give the foster child who is in a crisis situation as many options as possible. To circle will not. Basically, if this is the intent of the law and they cause problems for the district, with circle will not. And totally destroys the continuity of education, which is intended to the entire purpose of the It doesn't seem very character. It's not so very good. So the recommendation was <coughs> I agree with that. So I wouldn't support that. If everyone's okay with that, Joe, can circle back to my question? Curriculum, any questions on, well, one, we don't have a name. Two, we've been doing these for a while now. Um, I'm not going through one at a time. Is there anybody who wants to discuss anything on the curriculum? Okay, athletics. We have... We have a, a motion. Number one, we need a motion. Thank you. Sales force, do I need a second? Sales force, second. Thank you. Since the season is starting, we need to get this done. Correct. Yes. This was a reposter to the, uh, the uh, promotion of Dan Domino, and this person was originally hired. Okay. Anybody have discussion? Okay, then I need a roll call, Mr. Marathon. Don? Yes. Dino? Yes. Kramer? Yes. Ellis Foster? Yes. Callie? Yes. Weber? Yes. And Johnny? Yes. Resolution one pass. So you know, I'm trying to save us all and not go over from speaking. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts a little bit. It sounds like you swallowed glass on the way here. <laughs> Okay. Um, number two, that was one of the ones that um, the union president brought up. Uh, Dr. Hofer did have a conversation with the gentleman, and this is the correction at that time. So that, that's it. For me. All right. Anything else? Anybody? Is number three in place of what we table? No, this no, is over which high school. Seven. This is the high school. Oh, okay. School. So where are we with the table? Uh, Still doing interviews. We, we, we posted those positions doing interviews, and we should have them for January. Finance, we <coughs> need to um, vote on the bill list. So we need a motion and a second. Thank you, Sal. Rich, we've got a second. Yeah, I'll second. Thank Finance. you. The gun is a second. Any discussion on any of the bills? Yeah, just list? one one discussion for the sake of convenience, unless there's some objection. There are a number of board members who are getting reimbursed in this bill list. So if you want to like to hand without objection that the lower board members are abstaining from those purchase orders. So we don't have to do that, you're saying? Yes. That's correct. Joe will explain to you. Any other discussion? And the roll call, Mr. Brown. Dino? Yes. Prima? Yes. Ellis Foster? Yes. Callie? Yes. Weber? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Andriani? Yes. Resolution 1 passes. Thank you. Okay, the rest of finance is 3 through 10. Okay. Um, I don't know what Item number seven, the QSAC, on where is this derived? Are we going to be receiving an updated attachment? Because this is new information for the letter. Do you want to correct? Okay. Yeah, the, the, we received a letter from the state of New Jersey that should have been part of the attachments, which reflects this. We will send it to you. Well, if it's 100% and 100%, is there any change? No, it's not 100%. No, I'm looking at the first one. Right, so from 49 to 82, that would be the only change. Right, yes. Okay. All right. That was when we updated our curriculum that were out of the box. Okay. Um, Non-certificated personnel, <coughs> office. <coughs>
Any discussion? Mr. Mauro In future years, and I think Joe would agree with me, that if the, the program shows sustainability, we can move it to an enterprise fund in which it can fund itself. Correct? But it's actually what it's called, the program is mandatory. It's already given us one year leeway to treat it as a strictly educational but revenue that's being generated next year will start to be an enterprise fund. The law was already put me back close down. <laughs> Just so that Can I have the clarity, point? please. Do you, these two teachers are the teachers for the program. Yes. Are they the teachers for the students? Yes. So the six thousand dollars not to exceed is for what purpose? Yes. After school. Yes. After school. school. Okay. Okay. Just I just so that because that's not on here that it's after school. So I don't want anybody, you know, thinking that they're getting, you know, stipend position for additional stipends for their regular workouts. 
a new vendor. We're going a new direction. What happens to the profits right now? No, we, do, we don't sell prepared food because that would end up uh, impacting our Sodexo contract. Uh, so, uh, try to avoid that at all costs. Uh, so but there are cup of noodles, safe. but no water. So you can, have, you, can have, you, can have, you can have crunchy cup of noodles, but the pop tarts are the big, uh, the big ones that have sold so far. But the teachers do a great job. Yeah. This. The teachers do one. Quite a week. Yeah. Santa Claus showed up uh, to make some purchases. The students were fascinated that Santa, Santa stopped Aww. by and uh, the county superintendent stopped by and uh, it was great because Vincent who works there and Vincent goes way back with me and he makes sure he lets me know every time he sees me how long he's known me and he said you know it's quite an honor for me to stop by as superintendent but it's a bigger honor to have the county superintendent stop by as my boss. Oh, uh, Santa Claus was big. I said, well, who's the biggest person, the celebrity to stop by? And Santa Claus was definitely the best. And Santa Claus liked Snapple and not milk and cookies. Uh, which oh, we should all make milk and cookies. Yeah. I'll make sure that December 24th, Snapple is out as opposed to the hot chocolate in the cookies. Um, all right. Thank you for that update. And, uh, supplies, equipment, and services. One, two, three, four. We're in that. Any more discussion? Number one. Okay. Mr. Mara, the 7% uh, for the Millman, is that coming out of the money that we are borrowing for the ESIP, or is that coming out of our capital reserve account? No, it's coming out of the uh, funding ESIP money. Yes. Excellent. And what he is doing, he's our consultant who's going to be overseeing Honeywell, correct? That's what he's going to be working. He's going to be overseeing Honeywell and also working in coordination with Honeywell. Right, but they are responsible for their own engineers and architects to develop their plan, correct? He's there just to substantiate and... Yes. Yes. Very well. Thank you. Transportation. One, two, three. Seeing no hands, hearing no voices, moving to miscellaneous.
evidence on any district issue? Once, twice. Moving on. Old business. New business. Okay, I just wanted to report to the board that the well, the auditors have not made their report to the board yet. They will do so in January. But the audit uh, for the period ending in 2017, there were no audit recommendations. That's the Uh, new business, would anybody like to talk about continued planning? Did yeah, I mention yeah, that? I, I did have a question. I, didn't know it was still, I, didn't know okay. I, I was not shy, but I was not on board with this in the beginning. The thing that got me on board was Dr. Ivory's enthusiasm and energy. He was ready to go and shake my mind. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? You know? I think that in that particular perspective, from me, she's more like Dr. Ivory than she than any of the other candidates that we have well, I interviewed mean, I mean, and discussed. Late, you know. No, it's not too late. We did not contract her services. But I actually asked if they wanted to bring her in just so that you might have a hear her speak. Because, and I was thinking of you, actually, Mr. Prima, because, you know, no, seriously, because there were some of the other people who, and again, while qualified, did not have the presentation skills that you might have thought yeah, we I mean, need. I wasn't shy. I was not on board right. with people. He changed yeah. my mind. Right. Hmm? What clarification? She said she's consultant. Are we contracting directly with her or through ERIC? Through ERIC. The ERIC is the same. The ERIC is the same. So why would why would it even be a chance of being there? It's not safe. We could always not honor them. We don't have a contract. We have encumbered the money because it's part of our goal to do that. Somebody, I don't know who asked earlier about that. Is that right? Like, why wouldn't it be exactly the same? There is no we did. That was Doctor. That was with Doctor. That's what I'm saying. Why would it be different? So that's something I have to negotiate with them. Or with just, ERC. We're, we're pointing their direction. I mean, just like you know, if I buy a bottle of Snap One Shop Right, I mean, it shouldn't be a different price at a different shop. No. Gotcha. Um, but different people have different experiences and skills, so they might have different rates based on, you know, how many they got. Hairdressers are like that. Right. Sometimes you get an entry level hairdresser, it's less expensive than a more seasoned hairdresser. This is something that me and Mr. O'Neill know nothing about, but it's true. Could you use lawyers as It's my intention that they honor that contractual agreement that we entered with Dr. Ivory and we can have to do Or we've done it dirty once. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We were trying to put their hands in for them to allow us to yeah. use Dr. Ryder, but we couldn't shake that loose at all. Yeah, a, if we're not in contract, I prefer. He does always come down. Private person or the consultant. He has a he has he has his own He can wait a year and use him. That's what he's going to do. Right. There was another group that I did speak to. They sent me over a price list. They're all, they're all kind of compar comparable. Um, so the NJASA, uh, an outside group that NJASA endorses. Um, but I didn't feel at this point to bring it to. I wanted to meet Miss Brody um, because I didn't feel it's, it's more of a, a national firm. And I don't have to feel it had the connections to the at least the tri-state area and experience working in New Jersey. That I think that would work better for the whole I I believe that Ms. Karate had the most relevant experience of anyone since Dr. Ivan that we have been in discussion with. And she does it all the time. 
and she was the most animated and personal of all the people we have. Based on the five them. minutes that she had spoken, she hit all the key points that I look for in private industry. I feel very comfortable with her. And if you two feel that way, I'm close. Mm -hmm. um, the only other topic I want to bring up is to update the public, the board, and we had at the Buildings and Grounds Transportation Man, we can uh, wait for. Um, just let everyone know who might be impacted, that when I know who's impacted by uh, the Carl Sandburg School, will go offline right after school closes this sh summer uh, in June uh, because of a major electrical upgrades that must be done at that building. Part of it's a grant for a generator to uh, be used there as a uh, shelter uh, in disaster for the county shelter agreement. Uh, and part of it is an electrical upgrade with transformers um, that have been, um, I guess, damaged by damaged by water damage from past storms and everything pre pre previous uh, years. So to do that, uh, Sandberg School will be uh, without electricity um, from approximately mid-June to mid-August. <coughs> and that will impact <coughs> recreational programs, um, our housing, our using that building for um, extended year program and, and so forth. Even certain things like I have to meet with um, uh, Ms. Keeler. Even the band stores their equipment in there when they practice on the Lombardi Field during the summertime. Um, parents, students, staff members cannot go in there um, when there's no electricity in there, there's no alarms, no fire alarms. Um, the only ones being allowed to work in there is the contracted workers and the contracted custodians. So we'll have to relocate staff. Um, they're doing the summer work during that time. We'll have to um, possibly get trailers to get <coughs> the equipment in to keep it near the field um, so that no one would have needs to go into the building. But we've already started the process. Um, Dr. Sign has provided a list of things that need to get done and moved, and we're coming up with the answers for all those things and the timelines to get it done as soon as school closes. Will they still be able to get like the normal maintenance done during that time? Because there's always that, you know, painting and, you know, just kind of that shine and... We're, we have a, a uh, I guess, like, in, in, like I said, the custodians can still go in there. We'll have to support them with generators and um, items so that they can continue their work. Because the work is only being done in a small section of the building when you think of the massive size of the uh, Carl Center School. But, unfortunately, it's electricity that will affect the whole building. Um, so they'll be able to do their work with um, portable generators and so forth. Is, is that school currently uh, partially air conditioned or totally air conditioned? Right? Just has window air conditioning. All right, and will the upgrades to the electrical uh, lend themselves to support a full air conditioning system as the strategic plan comes along? From my understanding, it would increase the capacity of the building, but to that level, if it was full air conditioning, I'm not sure. Going to 3,200 amps, I believe. Right, and we're, so we're going to bring our amp usage for lighting and everything yeah. else. For, for upgrades due to the fact that the new equipment is higher energy efficient. So if it's 3,200 amps, as um, Mr. Millman had indicated, one of the buildings and grounds, we don't have enough power. And that's why I think they're moving the transformers outside, because they're larger transformers that they need to do the extended work. Exactly. The transformers are right now in the basement. And I think you are putting this together a contingency plan to have several sessions at Swamp School in the event of worst case scenario occurs. That is like the worst case scenario. But as we all know, transformers come from the utility company. The utility company can sometimes decide based upon the emergency situations to take transformers that are slated for a job and move it elsewhere. So we have to keep that in mind. So we're not going to enter into a blind. We'll have a plan for everything that we can think of in case the worst case scenario happens. But it's not work to get the um, postponed day long. But what but you but just said, does that mean they can take the Sandworks transformers and put them for those? What happens is it's the utility company that supplies the transformers to the vendor because that's that's utility company property. So if they spec out a certain transformer sites and three weeks or two weeks before they deliver to the site and something happens where there's a sandy or a storm, they can take those transformers and use them elsewhere because it's an issue. And then they have to reorder transformers and then not really stop items, so they may take another eight, 12 weeks to come in. So I've seen it happen on jobs. 
uh, in private industry where he assumes he says, you know what, your transformers got diverted and now you have to wait another 12 weeks. So that can happen. So, but Mr. Millman and the contracting firm have pledged that they're going to make sure that the necessary contacts are made within uh, JCP now to make sure that. <coughs> I mean, is it, is it, uh, when the contract goes in place, we have a defined work window. I mean, so yes, there's this. I mean, I'm just saying that we have a defined work window. Right? Is it possible to make sure the transformers are delivered on site long before? Since you're placing the order early. So early since you're a school district and it's part of this overall plan is that you're going to be a school district with uh, a shelter with FEMA facilities built in, it's hard to think of anyone who's going to bump you for these transformers. The hospital is done, and we're probably good. So it's something we should really get the public's <coughs> concern because it's, uh, it's, it's a possibility, absolutely, but legally you're in a real good position. Okay. So then the last item of the business is uh, we had a suggestion that one members made our ugly sweaters to go uh, on a last uh, meeting of December. So I'm just throwing it out of it. Not that I don't have a request. I'm just saying that that this I see there's some more than I already have. Well, this is true. Are you believing that Jeffrey's sweat is ugly? How dare you? I think that's pretty cool looking. I would suggest you're going to do that. And then We're not doing that. I'm just saying I wanted to point out that you... What? I was going to make it good though because you know we just had a we just had a student we just had a student who um, through the working with many districts when the Overs but other districts donated uh, twenty seven thousand letters to Macy's for the Make a Wish Foundation to raise fifty four thousand dollars and if the board wants to get involved then I think if they want to entertain an ugly sweater contest on the board you each ante up and I'll be there too ten dollars a piece and. We'll let the public at the meeting decide who's wearing the ugliest sweater, and I'm in. And that the money I'm goes in your name to that charity. I'm in. I'll give you a sweater if I don't have to. <laughs> 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 Just wear a beautiful sweater. Better sweater. Yeah. Yeah. This time of year, we're all sold out. Oh, my, no, my, daughter needed, my daughter needed one. Christmas tree shop sells ugly sweaters, and they light up. So I said, "Hey, go wear this one." We can have further conversation. I can email you the, the confines of the of the. Uh, of the contest, you know, for yeah, all, just let me off your end. Okay. No, it's all to a good Okay. Can, can Mr. O'Neill be in on that contest, too? 20 minutes. Only if you open it up. We have a meeting tomorrow. Mr. O'Neill, we're going to discuss the fact that you could be in on that other contest. I make every sweater look good. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and on that note, I think we're adjourned. I need a no. no? Very brief oh, here is the screen. Oh, oh <laughs> This is a very, 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 very. Brief. This is really, truly. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Any I need, a, I need a second. I'll second that, Madam President. All right. Right now, Alice Foster. Yes. Allie. Yes. 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 Yes.